Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Today's Boardrooms, presented by Diligent Institute, your source for the latest and greatest in corporate governance, all in 10 minutes. I'm your host, Lisa Edwards, Executive Chair of Diligent Institute, and today I'm joined by John Rohde, who is a leader at KPMG's Board Leadership Center. John, welcome to the show. Hey, Lisa, good to see you again. So, you know, Jay, Gen AI continues at the top of the news and, you know, continues to surprise, delight, terrify, depending on who you talk to. And board members can be at a little bit of a loss here, but you've got some data-based answers about what's going on after KPMG did a survey of board directors. So today we'll be covering generative AI, but in the corporate space. Um, so let's talk about hype versus reality. Based on your recent survey of board directors, what are you seeing companies focusing on for their Gen AI activities at this point? Yeah, so thanks, Lisa. And you, I mentioned our survey, and the survey we did was back in March of this year. We surveyed over 100 uh, corporate board members, and a couple of things came out from that, some probably not surprising. Um, you know, Mostly companies are using Gen AI now on an ad hoc basis. That's how their employees are using it with most in that proof of concept phase where they're piloting new, new technologies with the main focus on productivity, trying to be more efficient and cost savings. Um, second point is that most companies have, um, have developed and have communicated a responsible use policy for employees. So important to kind of set those parameters for how they expect employees to, new, to, to use this new technology. Um, very few are pausing their use of Gen AI, you know, pending greater regulatory um, certainty. And then, um, you know, probably also not surprising, very, very few at this point have adopted Gen AI at scale and really integrated it into their company strategy. Great. So it sounds like some of these directors are really talking about experimenting on the edges, trying out some use cases. But, you know, board directors are also very concerned with what are the risks to the companies. And of course, enterprise risk management is core to what directors do. What Gen I risks jumped out in your survey? And what's your current thinking on the guardrails around those risks? Yeah, so so Gen AI is certainly uh, new new territory for a lot of companies, and I think there's that tension that companies are finding between wanting to go uh, go fast but also go slow at 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 the same time as they navigate um, these these new opportunities and risks. So from our survey, a, a couple of risks uh, popped out. You know, first being the the risk of inaccurate data or inaccurate results. Um, you know, because the obviously the, it processes information based on everything out there, and not everything out there is accurate. Shocking, shocking that not everything is accurate on the internet. That's a real risk that they face when um, companies are are you know using the data and looking at results that aren't accurate. IP risk, data privacy risk, and I I'll kind of put cybersecurity risk in that um, um, mix as well. Algorithmic bias, uh, certainly there, there's bias out there and that could find its way into results. Compliance risk, you know, that it's changing as far as uh, what the compliance world looks like. And then, of course, reputational risk as well. And then when it comes to guardrails, a um, you know, few, few thoughts on the company's gen AI policy and where board members should be focused. One is asking questions as far as does the management team have an inventory of where Gen AI is being used, um, you know how and when is a Gen AI model being developed, and, and and who's on point for making that decision within the organization? Is there a cross-functional team that works with that management point person to ensure that uh, you're getting a broad swath of views on the appropriate use of Gen AI? Is there a responsible use policy? I mentioned that in my opening remarks in, in this survey. And then are, is management staying apprised of the regulatory developments and the regulatory landscape, which is fast moving as well? Yeah, there's a lot uh, going at full speed here. Well, let's talk specifically about the board oversight of Gen AI in terms of, you know, where are you seeing the primary oversight uh, and that responsibility? Uh, is that sitting at the full board? Is that the audit committee? Is it, you know, a technology committee? Um, sort of where is it showing up and popping up in the proxies? And then what are the key areas for that board oversight? Yeah, so so our survey showed us that at right now, 
over our responsibilities is at the full board level with about two thirds of, of the respondents saying um, that that's where it resides. Audit is is a close second there with probably about the other third, you know, kind of mixed between audit and 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 risk committee having having overall responsibility for it. And as far as the kind of critical areas for, for board oversight, um, we we would point to ensuring that the board understands how management is looking to assess the strategic implications of Gen AI for the company. Um, I mentioned getting an inventory of where Gen AI is, is currently bo- being used, and also really important to understand um, management's efforts to put in place a governance framework uh, and the policies that underlie that, looking at the adequacy of a company's Gen AI talent and how they're staying up to speed with a fast-changing um, talent environment, how they're managing and how how they're complying with the uh, patchwork of Gen AI legislation and regulation, and then how how they're thinking about, uh, how how the company's thinking about uh, risk management frameworks broadly around generative AI. Yeah, you know, um, the audit committee sure is getting a lot of stuff at its toes plate. I'm wondering if if you all have an opinion uh, from, from KPMG on that, because, you know, a lot of audit committees also added cyber when the SEC said, hey, you know, you have to start filing four days within a material event. So is, is audit committee sort of um, the, the temporary stopping place for that? Do you get the feeling or is it, you know, is it there to stay? You know, I, I think it depends on what Gen AI is being used for in the organization. Um, a, a simple example is if a company is going to use generative AI to prepare a draft set of financial statements or a, a shell set of financial statements, uh, certainly that would clearly fall within the audit committee's purview. But if a company is using Gen AI, generative AI, say from a customer service standpoint or another frontline systems, that that probably wouldn't fall within the purview of the audit committee. So again, we always ground the audit committee responsibilities and oversight over financial reporting and oversight over internal controls over financial reporting. And that's the lens that uh, we would suggest audit committees should look at when they're making an assessment of where that risk should should lie. Got it. That makes a ton of sense. You know, I saw a super cool use case, actually. That reminds me um, about... Uh, a company that had fed in a bunch of uh, of their investor day and their um, and their earning statements, and then said, "What what questions are we likely to get?" and um, and then sort of generated all the questions that they are so they weren't surprised on the day of. So there's just a lot of cool stuff going on there, and it's so neat, you know. And, and I think the you know the Gen AI is here to stay. It's going to be a journey for all of us. It's going to be a meandering path for some and a straight line for others. There's a great quote from your report that said, you know, th- that 2023 was a game changer um, in terms of moving AI from a couple thousand uh, data scientists into the hands of 100 million people or something to that effect. You know, from an oversight perspective, how can the board get a sense of where their company is in this journey? Is, the, is this inventorying thing that you've talked about? Is that the place to start? Um, and and how do they uh, and how do they sort of keep get their hands around that? Yeah, I I think that's certainly a place to start is understanding wh- where a company is using it, and as I mentioned, who's responsible for uh, signing off, if you will, on, on where this new technology is being used. I think there's a series of questions that audit committees can pose to the different management functions. You can ask that the chief technology officer or the CIO, you know, how many employees can safely use generative AI by the end of the year? What measurable productivity improvements do, do you expect to have as an organization to the CFO um, or the, the chief strategy officer? If you assume our you know, customers and our, and, and our competitors and our suppliers are also using generative AI, uh, what would that do to the company's revenue and cost base? So kind of thinking thinking ahead to that next step, I think, is what we suggest those questions that 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 that, that board should be asking. That's great. Well, thank you, John, uh, for kind of breaking down those survey results for us. And you've given us a lot to think about. Um, if you are interested in more information, you can check out uh, more from KPMG on their board leadership center website. And then you can find the survey uh, up on the KPMG sites. We'll also link that in our show notes on the Corporate Dress Grow podcast channel and on our YouTube channel. So thank you again, John. Thanks, Lisa. Always good to be with you. And join us next time for another edition of Inside Today's Boardrooms. Thanks for listening. 